Okay, hello everybody. <clears throat> My name is Anton. I'm hardware chief of, at Yadro Company. I want to share with you our experience of designing P9 based uh, systems in strong mechanical restrictions. So that's the name of the presentation. And uh, chapter one is the purpose. Uh, why do we need this high density super pooper, etc.? Uh, firstly, because we can, but there are other reasons actually, and a few words about the other reasons. So currently, Yadro had, has three hardware boxes for building our products. Uh, here they are. It's a server Vesnian, PCI Express fabric controller, and a J-Bot. A few words about each of one without any details because it's not the main topic of the presentation. So, Visnin Server, it's a four socket uh, P9 based platform that can support up to eight terabytes of RAM with 120 DIMMs inside. Also, it can support up to 24 NVMe drives. Uh, these NVMe drives are equally spread between all the CPUs, six drives per CPU. Thus, it's a heavy machine for in-memory applications, for heavy loads, etc., etc. Uh, the next box is PCI Express Fabric Contro Controller. Basically, it's a big PCI switch. Uh, it is built on two-layer structure of PLX PCI Express switches with Fabric's functionality. It can carry up to 128 NVMe drives or if you want, uh, it can carry up, up to 96 NVMe drives plus 16 PCI Express cards. So uh, this box supports multi-root IOV, so you can build uh, huge uh, systems with multiple routes, with big flash arrays, lots of I.O. So. And the third box, third box is just a bunch of disks. It's, 96 disk drives behind SAS expanders. That's interesting about it. So, and the sizes is, is the small guy is two units, the second guy is three units, and the big guy is four units. Uh, so, what's the problem with this? Uh, the problem is that currently, due to federal regulations in Russia, there is a strong demand for a simple, conservative SAS storage systems. And unfortunately, we don't have simple SAS storage system uh, because these three boxes are for advanced featured systems. But we want to sell something to our customers, so what we do? We do the strange things. We take uh, two Visnin servers, remove all the memory from it, remove all NVMe subsystem. So it's empty server with first circuits. Uh, we take <coughs> PCI Express Fabric Controller, controller remove all NVMe drives from it, all PLX switches, use only PCI Express expansion boards. So we connect two servers to PCI Express Fabric Controller, controller plug inside uh, 14 HB SAS adapters, and connect to it from 1 to 14 GBoot drives, so drive enclosure. So the system. Uh, it's strange, actually. It's strange, but for large stops with lots of petabytes, it's okay because it's reliable, it's redundant, it is easily scalable. Uh, we sell lots of this system. Uh, nobody complains, I guess. But uh, disadvantages are obvious. The first disadvantage is that you need two servers with four CPU each. And for CPU, we need only four PCI Express slots because we don't need four CPU for processing something, just PCI Express slots. Also, uh, since we have CPUs, we have to add memory to each CPU. We have to plug inside memory cards uh, based on Centaur chip. That's the second disadvantage. The third disadvantage is that PCI Express Fabric Controller, controller is totally empty. It utilizes only 25% of space. And the result, uh, 
for small system use, if you want a small system with only 96 drives, you still need two servers, one PCI Express fabric contro controller and 11 units of rack space. No good, no good. So we started to think, what can we improve in this situation? So meet next system concept. It's already not a concept we build it, but start with the concept. So we decided to take PCI Express Fabric Controller chassis, uh, remove all NVMe stuff, and instead of them, put inside two storage con controllers. Basically, two small servers in one chassis. Um, so. We don't need a lot of memory for this system, so we decided to use P9 CPU with direct attach memory, so it would be P9 CPU so with um, eight uh, redeems per CPU in the system. And we have 100% of chassis utilization because we also add a battery. You, if you see that blue stuff, the chassis is a battery. Mechanical concept, we call it Nicole. Uh, what is it? It's a storage con controller node. It consists of three boards. Uh, the first one is the motherboard. The second one is management board. And a small mid-plane card uh, that connects management board to CPU board. That's the concept of the storage con controller node. Uh, it's a block diagram. You can see that uh, it consists of two CPUs with uh, eight DIMMs per CPU. Actually, it can work only with one CPU, it's the PU0, because its PCI Express connections are used. Secondary is um, optional. Uh, and uh, there is a kind of typical architecture for that kind of system. How did we design it? Of course, we took Romulus reference design as schematic. We took manage management card design from Wisnian server. We took our mechanical concept, put it in the bucket, shake it, and uh, decided to look what happened. The first board, it's a motherboard. Uh, that board contains only CPU sockets, DIMM sockets, VRM subsystem, and C uh, clock generator system. No space for any other system on these boards. It's full. It's almost 100 you know, utilization of uh, PCB space. Uh, that's how the routing of this main board looks like. Power layers are switched off, only signal layers are turned on. A written time of that PCB was uh, 67 main days. Uh, we used two guys for routing that PCB, so you should multiple by two. Uh, and about mechanical restrictions. The first restrictions is PCB size. Uh, if you um, if you roll back to and look at Fabric PCI, PCI controller, you can see that there are sections for NVMe drives. One section. Uh, contain 16 drives. Two sections contain 32 drives. We decided to uh, utilize two sections per one storage con controller. One section is about the width of 2.5 and VMI drive. So two sections is, you can see the size, actually. It's uh, comparative to A4. It's kind of that board, not big. Because the board is not big, uh, the main bad thing that we had to do, we moved DDR sockets right at CPU. They are just socket and RDIM socket, RDIM slot. No space for schematic at all. You jump from CPU right to, right to connector. You can do the wiggling, uh, trombones, etc. It's a very big problem. The routing of the stuff was very suffering. Uh, the second restriction is PCB thickness, because PCB uh, have uh, H-card connectors on both sides. So PCB thickness is limited by, by H-card itself, so it's 2.4 millimeters thickness. In that thickness, we was able to put 20 layers. We cannot put more because of the thickness. And from these 20 layers, 
only six layers are suitable for signal routing because we utilize lots of layers for power. Uh, outer layers are totally blocked, unusable for any routing. So only six layers for XBus, uh, DDR routing, PCI Express, and all that stuff. Not too much, actually. The third restriction was airflow. Airflow di direction is shown by red arrows. Because of that airflow, airflow direction, we had to locate dim sockets parallel to short side. Short side is almost, is have almost the same length. So it leads to, uh, we had to route XBus between CPUs right in dim field. So XBus goes right through dim field and PCI Express lanes are also go right through dim field. It's not recommended, but we had no choice. You can see the routing, how it looks like. All high speed is right through dims. No good, but nothing to do. Surprises. During uh, the design, we had a couple of surprises from IBM team. I'm not complaining, I just want to illustrate how changing the design requirements impact on design process. When we done uh, routing DDR, uh, new requirement appear. Small requirement, just align two clocks between two CPUs. In our case, it was totally fatal. We had to reroute 30% of DDR. We just all erased almost everything and started it from the scratch because that was the routing. The second surprise is uh, changing TDP from 160 watts to 190 watts. You know, three, uh, 30 amperes, it's a lot of current, actually. You can see a picture on the right side. Uh, the left pictures are showing current density. The right pictures are showing voltage drop. Red means don't work. So <laughs> red don't work on the right pictures. On the left pictures, white means, I guess, temperature of the sun surface. So, and the board is already finished. We can't change nothing. Uh, the only way we found, we changed power copper to three ounces. It's not easy step because when you go to three ounces and more, it became very hard to fabricate. You have to increase all copper to copper spaces. You have to put inside thick preprex because copper layer can, can push it through. So we have uh, very small copper bridges between vias in BGA ballout area. We spend a lot of time for DC uh, power supply simulation. Uh, we made a lot of cheap movements, a lot of shapes tuning, uh, uh, just too close to margins. We didn't get into margins, actually. We are outside the margins, but we are close to them. That's all we could do. Uh, the next board is simple. It's management card, nothing special here. Just see the picture. It has BMC, two M2, M.2 drives for operating system boot. It has BMC, flash, panels, uh, connectors. Uh, RG45 connectors are debug. In mass production, there will be no any connectors because they look strange in the system, actually. You will see it in the next slide. That's the fabricated, oh, sorry. Fabricated systems. We already produced it and testing. That's it. That's how it looks like. One chassis, two storage controllers inside. Both of them are hot pluggable. You can remove it right on the, uh, during, when system power it on. You can remove one storage contro controller, controller and put another. To get rid of in-rush current, we use precharged pin inside. Because when you plug inside, when you plug <coughs> motherboard with lots of capacitance, there is a very high in-rush current. So it's also an issue. But how, that's how it looks like. And the third chapter is uh, the most funny one. It's a uh, debug. Mm, I will not tell you about our standard problems like system power on, CPLD programming. You know it yourself. It's not interesting. I will tell you about interesting things. Interesting things. Okay. The system is power on. What 
want we to do with it? We want to put a CPU inside, right? Right. The problem is that P9 CPU and P8 CPU are the same. And of course we took wrong CPU. <laughs> we took wrong CPU and we, when we put it inside the main board, we noticed very strange thing. Uh, when we put it inside, we noticed a white smoke coming out of the socket. And when the smoke uh, stopped coming out, the system turned off. So I think that the white smoke is a living force of any electronic device. If you let the white smoke out of the device, the device would no, will not work. That's the first conclusion from that experience. The second conclusion is that P8 CPU unfortunately doesn't work in P9 motherboards. So, so we put the smoke in there to warn you. Hmm? We put the smoke in the chip to warn you about it. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it would be better than putting a P8 P9 on, on the top of the chip. <laughs> The second issue, uh, there is a strong requirement for VRM subsystem in design guidelines. Certain power rates, power rails should be on a certain control loops. Uh, we did it vice versa. You ask me why? Uh, because I'm Batman, that's why. Actually, mm, I guess we just didn't notice that requirement in datasheet. I guess, uh, sometime I guess that our schematic engineer don't read data sheets at all, so. But it works, no problem. We just corrected platform XML file and it works. How did we notice it? We just noticed wrong voltages. We saw that some Y CPU set in wrong voltages on these power rails. Why? Because of, because of that stuff, because we missed it. Uh, the third issue, it's AVS bus issue. What the problem with AVS bus issue. Mm, if you read the data sheet, VRM have uh, voltage margins. Mm, what we do, we took voltage margins and put it inside VRM controller. It's logical, right? When we tried to boot the system, it didn't want it to boot. When we looked at the debug console, we noticed that CPU is trying to set voltage uh, below the margin. And uh, we write email to IBM, IBM guy said, okay, it's not correct, we will correct data sheet. So um, we corrected margins and system was able to boot. And what conclusion can we make from that experience? Uh, don't trust the dogs. The dogs are lying. Uh, the first uh, very funny issue during the, the debug, we suddenly uh, noticed that uh, management card is totally unconstrained, totally. Our layout engineer just didn't turn on constraint checks. You know, there is a specific bit button in Allegro Cadence, turn on constraints, it was turned off. No constraints, the, no constraints on DDR, no constraints on PCI Express, no constraints at all, no DRCs, the boards are, is in green zone. When I turn constraints on, PCB starts to look like on the slide. Uh, skew is much several millimeters on DDR bus. And it works. No problem with BMC card. It boots, it works, it's okay. What conclusion can we make from this experience? The first conclusion is that design rules are for cowards. You shouldn't follow them. The second conclusion is that signal integrity is not existing. Don't listen to Eric Bogatin and all those experts. Signal integrity is a myth. <laughs> Just roll the PCB and it will work. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> uh, and my small presentation coming to an end. So the results of the first revision. Uh, Nicole is feel fine. Uh, it works fine. Currently under DVT testings. Um, no serious issues found actually. Um, we see some errors on PCI Express bus, uh, but it has no any impact on performance. Unfortunately, we can get access to PCI Express error counters, 
we just see that PCI Express errors are exist. Uh, but the, since it, there is no impact on performance, I guess a few errors there are. Uh, the most possible reason of that behavior, I guess, because PCI Express is routed in DIM field. It goes right through eight DIM sockets. A lot of cross talks, uh, a lot of noise. So I guess that's the reason. We can't do nothing with this. Uh, what should, what uh, we are did actually already in the next revision. We changed PCB material from regular loss. Uh, by the way, all the three PCB were regular loss. I even don't know the, maybe it was Shengu, Shengzhe, some Chinese material, I don't know, not branded and it works. But we changed, we changed it to low loss. Uh, for low loss, we are usually use materials from Tuk, a Taiwanese PCB material company. We change it because we have some hope that it will help with PCI Express errors. Maybe it will help, we don't know. Because PCI Express in the structure is quite long, it's longer than 10 inches actually, from CPU to the M2 drives. So 10 inches is quite long for regular loss. Uh, we little bit optimized PCI layout because it have about eight vias per channel. The total channel is two connectors and eight vias and on regular loss material, you know, out of margin, it works. It's okay, signal integrity doesn't exist. <laughs> we decreased number of vias now, it's total four vias per channel. Um, and of course we corrected uh, DDR routing and all the stuff on management card because, you know, it should be green really without DRC. So we corrected it. And currently we are waiting when the next revision will be fabricated to continue our testing. So another one picture of the system. RG45 is debug connector, don't look at it. That's it. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay.